This is just a, uh, this. Hey, hey, it's another day, and have I got a video for you guys. Hi, my name is Megan, and today I'm gonna take you around my home with organization in mind. Now, I'm a mom of a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and I'm not a cluttery type of person, like I don't enjoy clutter. <laughs> you might not get that vibe from looking at my gallery wall over there. But I like to have things pretty pared down so that organization's a lot easier. Now, I'm still on an organizing journey. I'm pretty good at organizing my time, but you know, items and my home is something that I'm still in the process of doing and that's been what I've been busy with in 2021. Just getting on top of some of the ugly and dysfunctional spaces in my home. And I'm gonna show you so many practical, not always pretty methods for organizing the spaces in your home. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below which one, two, three, five you plan to do in your home and let's get going. So I'm gonna turn you around right now and so you can see my entryway. And there's two elements in my entryway that really have helped me stay organized. That is number one, this box by the steps here. Now you're gonna see some dated areas of our home. We've only been here about a year and a half, so it's kind of a process to get things up to speed and pretty and just like how I want them. The staircase is one of those projects that is still not done. But right here by the staircase, I have this super handy large basket that I keep by the steps and then I just throw things in there that I want to take upstairs again later. And it is so helpful um, rather than setting things on the steps for people to trip over or whatever. It seems like an obvious solution, but I waited so long to do that. And I'm so glad that I finally got a nice soft basket that's not gonna like bat damage anything. The kids can carry it around too if they need to. And it just sits right there and it's a reminder to take things with us as we go up the steps. Super easy. And that's a basket that I just picked up at Burlington. Also over here underneath my entry table, I have another basket and right now it is completely empty. Um, but this comes in super handy when we have guests over, they can just throw their shoes in here or they can put them underneath as well. But it's just a nice place to keep them contained. Even for ourselves in the summer, I like to keep flip flops in here just to slip on to run out and get the mail or whatever. So get yourself a cute basket or two for your entryway and it's gonna keep things a little more contained. Okay, now over here into my living room. Now we mainly use this space just for like seating. When guests come, we sit and chat, whatever. It's not like a play area toy room too much, but I found that it is really helpful to keep toys that you don't want the children playing with without supervision away from the rest of the toys. So my solution for that is you see these two built-ins. They were existing when we bought the home. We painted them white and then down here below in the bottom cupboards is where I keep all the kids um, like activities that they can't really play with by themselves or like things that have lots of individual pieces that I don't want them getting like 15 of those out if that makes sense. So here I have just some magnet tiles and I'm using just the Dollar Tree shoe boxes. They're a dollar a pop, super, super affordable and they look clear, clean, you know, they're nothing pretty but they're nothing ugly either. Also any games like memory is a favorite um, that's down here. And so they can't just have the pieces all out everywhere else. They're over in a different area. They know that they need to ask permission before they get something out. And we only do one at a time, sometimes two, depends. But they're away from like guest kids, you know, if they come over and they're like, you know, they can't just ransack everything. So that has been a real winner for us. Again, I like to keep blankets within easy reach. It's just a way to make your house feel more cozy and inviting. So I have another decorative basket with blankets as well as an antique that I got from my great grandpa. Every time I see that, it's a sweet reminder of him and he was really big into antiques. I was fortunate to catch this at my grandpa's sale and we keep blankets in it. So I will always think of him when I see it and then it also serves a functional purpose. So I feel very happy that I can use an heirloom as an organization piece and just get to see it in my home every single day and not just like hide it away behind glass or something. Okay, sorry for all the crazy camera angles, but I don't have anybody here to film me today. So I'm kind of moving the camera around myself and I just wanna make sure you can see everything as I'm talking about it. But before I take you into our kitchen, I wanna take you into our laundry room slash mud room and show you some systems that really work for us and I think they're gonna be life changing for some of you as well. Okay, we are currently in my laundry. It is nothing pretty, but that's fine. I wanted to show you something that really works well for us, and that is I keep the kids' socks and their shoes right by the door. So I have this basket with their socks in. They just both wear black socks. Keep them right there, and then their shoes are in a disorganized basket by the door. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. We just kick them off, they put them in there. It never looks super pretty, but it works really well because it's right there by the door. And then I also 
have a basket where I keep lost and found items. That way if I know I'm going to see a friend that left something at our house. Currently I have Amanda's little girl's jacket here and I have Lynette's little girl's bow. So hopefully if I remember that as I'm running out the door, I can grab it and remember to return it. You know, it's just a nice spot to keep things and you have central area. Sometimes I'll keep like egg cartons in there because my mom likes to collect them because they sell eggs at the farm. But just having it right by the door is a way to at least hopefully help me to remember. Um, and then one more thing I wanted to show you in my closet here. We are fortunate to have a big spacious closet here in our laundry and this is how I store our paper supplies right here just in little um, boxes and they're right there easy to grab out of the way and I can really stock up because there's plenty of space and the rest of this area could use a little bit more work probably. And then down here I just have two seasonal bins. This one here has all like the swimsuits in and stuff. We just returned from Florida so that got put to work. And then this one here is all of our winter snow boots, snow hats, snow pants, all that kind of thing. We live in Pennsylvania and so these things come in handy pretty often. Okay and then I cannot take you into my laundry room without showing you my laundry bin sorting system. This is such an awesome way to get organized. I will link a similar one down below. Basically I do one load of laundry every day, the fullest one, and it's just just been a life changer. I love the four compartments. I definitely recommend four and the way I organize it is dirty wash which would be Josh's stuff and then more delicates is what I call it which is my stuff, the kids stuff and any of Josh's like good clothes not jeans and stuff like that and then I also have towels and then I also have whites so that's kind of how it works for me. It works awesome. <laughs> kitchen here. I wanted to show you a, oh, here's my list. Let's make sure I don't forget anything I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so into my kitchen here, I'm not going to show you every little organization tip that I have in my kitchen, just the ones that I think are super valuable and would help you guys out a lot. Number one is my pantry. I just did a video that you guys really loved on my channel and I showed you how I organized my pantry using things that I already had, DIYing some stuff and actually implementing a totally different process that I highly recommend you doing if you're thinking about organizing your pantry. It still works great as you can see here, it's still pretty organized and I think I found a winning system for us. Also I wanted to show you guys down here I have my Tupperware. First of all, if you want to organize your Tupperware I have to tell you pare down first, like declutter it and get rid of anything you haven't used in the last year. So that's probably the biggest tip. The second tip that I like to do though is I just started storing my dishes with the lids on and I haven't had any problem with them like smelling yet or anything like that so I'm gonna keep doing it for now. I really like how it looks. I'm never looking for a lid. It saves me time and yeah I just feel like it's solved a lot of issues with everybody's Tupperware drawer. Now I don't have an ideal Tupperware drawer. My old house it was so nice I could just like pull out a drawer and look down and see everything. Here I just have like cabinets but that's probably what a lot of you have as well. So if you are building a new kitchen I do highly recommend though that you get like big deep pull out drawers for your Tupperware. But for now this is going to work. We're going to keep this kitchen the way it is for the time being. Let me show you underneath my kitchen sink. Do I really want to do this? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. <laughs> this is under my kitchen sink. It's not pretty but I have found a genius solution for storing things. Now I have a drying rack that I never use. I just don't ever use it, I don't know, I just dry the dishes and put them away or I use my dishwasher. So I have been keeping this down here and using it to store all of my cleaning supplies that I use frequently. Now I do have other cleaners out in the laundry closet but this is just for things that I reach really quickly for. My granite cleaner, my wood cleaner, different things like that. And then right here in the middle I store my trash bags and look, if you just pull it up, pull it out, there you go. It works kind of like a tissue box and it works really well. So if you have like an unused drying rack flying around, doing that, also maybe adding a hook or two to the side so you can hang some things um, and just using containers that you have to contain things. Imagine containing things with containers. <laughs> anyway, so I had this Glow Grove Collaborative thing that I just decided to put all my wood cleaners in there and then I also have this basket over here that I keep um, grocery bags in because you know they come in handy for so many different things. Anyway. First to admit I have many spaces in my home that need better organization systems like for one my spice cabinet is just way too small for what my needs are and I still don't have a great system yet I'm probably gonna have to get something custom made for that drawer just because it's like a weird shape but that brings me to my next thing I want my spices there because 
I want them within easy reach when I'm cooking. And I think that's the best organization tip for anybody's kitchen. Definitely put things where you use them. So up here above my microwave, I keep all of my hot pads, that kind of thing. And then beside here, I have all my kettles. Um, and my Lazy Susan keeps all my heavy appliances so I don't have to dig to the back of any drawer to find them. And one more thing that I do is I do keep out on my countertop the toaster, the coffee pot, and the knife block because we use those things, you know, every single day. But I do think you need to think through what you want on your kitchen counters and then buy appropriately, like buy it almost like decor, buy, you know, stainless or black, whatever you think is going to look right in your kitchen. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because these things are perfectly fine yet. But when I go to purchase, you know, a new toaster or whatever, you can believe that I'm going to think about the aesthetic of it as well because I have it on my countertop all the time and it's something that I see. And so I will feel a lot more organized if things are a little more cohesive. Also behind me here, I wanted to show you, this is just a, uh, this is That literally just happened in my video. Well, I was gonna show you how my cups are so nicely organized on here, but this came with the house and apparently the installation is as old as the house is because that was not supposed to happen. So anyway, lesson learned. I had at my old house one from Ikea and we installed it the same way and just put your pretty coffee cups on there so they're easy to grab if you want you know, some decor as well as some storage. Um, and I also keep my pretty measuring cups on there too. because it makes it a little less sad. You know, at least we can get a funny blooper out of it, right? Anyway, I'll clean this up in just a bit. Thank goodness the kids are napping. They won't be stepping on that. I wanted to show you one more thing in my kitchen that looks somewhat organized. Here, let's get away from that mess. <laughs> oh my. Over here, I keep um, just like paraphernalia that you kind of want on your kitchen counter. A candle, some fat straw. Um, here I have napkins, salt and pepper shaker, and my water. My phone often ends up here, and here I have a to-do list. Um, just keeping it in a tray makes it look a lot less cluttered and a little more organized, and you know that it has a spot and has a home right there. It's not going to get wet if you're cooking or whatever. Another thing that would be great to put here is like a cookbook stand. You could do that um, just to keep it dry, out of the way, and kind of somewhat contained. Okay, so follow me into our probably most lived-in room besides our kitchen. is our toy room. Now, I totally underestimated how important a toy room was gonna be. It, this room is ideal. It's right off the kitchen. The kids can play here. There's space for them. They can like have a cluttery mess. Most of the time, this room is a mess. And then on Fridays or Saturdays, we will clean it up and it'll be cleaned up for the week and then we start it all over the next week. But this room obviously is not ideal by looks. This is actually our next project. I really wish we would have done this room like first or second because we use it so much. We use it so often and it is in need a better organization and just like a better system all around. But I do have two things in here I wanna show you that work really well for us. And maybe it's something that you can use as a solution in your home if you're running into some problems. Not everybody has a big, giant, nice toy room like this. I say nice in quotation marks because it will be nice, guys. Have faith in me. I definitely have confidence that we can take this room from a 1970s dining room into a modern day kids wonderland school room toy room type of thing so stick around on my channel for that if you want to see what we come up with i'm really excited but anyway over here not built-ins but they almost function as built-ins they're just like crates that i painted white and then i upholstered some pieces of wood put some padding and some duck cloth over them and then they just became like little seats but actually inside we got all the mess all the toys and you better believe inside a lot of these crates, there's more Dollar Tree shoe boxes to keep sets contained in and things like that. So this system works pretty good. And if your guests wanna help clean up the toys, they can just throw everything into the crates and I can organize it later if I want to, or if I feel the need. Um, but I definitely love the system at my old home. Um, it doesn't look very pleasing in here, obviously. Anyway, enough jokes about how ugly this room is. I am very blessed to have this room, regardless of how it looks. I love the big window. I love all the space, the organization. We even have room for some seating in here. So if you have a bonus room in your home, I highly recommend you turn it into a toy kids room. It's, it's wonderful. Now I did briefly want to mention my sewing craft area here behind me. Normally it's in this room right, right beside us here, but we are renovating that into an office and sewing area for me. Um, so that's not done yet. So for now I just pulled it in here, but this is a great storage solution. If you have an extra like cubicle set sitting around in your home and you don't know what to do with it, turn it sideways, lay it on a table, and then you can use it just to store all kinds of stuff. 
Right now it's not super pretty looking, um, but for now it works great. And you know, if that's something you have flying around, it's a way to get organized without buying anything new. So just a tip there. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited when I have my new office ready to go. <sighs> Hopefully just a few more weeks. Speaking of the office, that's where I'm at right now. Um, can't show you too much yet, but we're gonna go ahead and go through this door and go up the steps. I'm gonna show you some solutions that I've used in my upstairs. But before I do that, I'd like to invite you to subscribe for more motherhood content. I document my life as a Mennonite here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, as a mom of a three-year-old and a one-year-old, also running a YouTube channel and a small business on the side called Fox Sparrow. And if you wanna know more about that, I do have a website down below. We sell all kinds of products handmade by stay-at-home moms. And yeah, it's just been quite the adventure starting that up. So if you wanna see more like day in the life stuff of a Mennonite mompreneur, I guess you found the right spot. So I invite you to subscribe. Also, if you are liking this video, there's a whole entire playlist down below in my description box of other moms who are uploading this week their organized home tours. So you're not just gonna get ideas from my video, but all their videos as well. And so I will definitely put that link right where you can see it down there in the description box. Just hit that little triangle arrow over here it's gonna pull up a link with all of their videos as well. And I believe Dawn from The Minimal Mom got this together and I'm so glad that I was invited to be a part of it. So don't stop here. After I show you the upstairs, I definitely think you should click on those videos. So up the steps we go. So I think you've gathered by now that our home is a work in progress. It's definitely not all renovated yet and you're gonna see that a lot more in our upstairs. It just hasn't been as much of a priority because we don't live up there necessarily. We sleep there with our eyes closed, um, but it is next on the list. But I still think even if your home I'm sure a lot of you are in the same place I am. Your home is just not maybe your ideal homey home, you know, but maybe you're just holding out because of finances or time reasons or that's what we're waiting on too. Exactly, same thing. Um, but you still can have an organized home, even if it isn't like maybe your favorite color palette or it's maybe a little dated, dark. You can still have a clean and organized home. That doesn't have to stop you just because it's not maybe your ideal aesthetic. So take that and run with it if that applies to you. Anyway, I'm not making apologies. We all have to prioritize our money and our time, but let's go upstairs and I'll show you some organization ideas that I use. Okay, first I'm gonna show you in my daughter's room. Now she's taking a nap, so I did pre-film the overlays for this, so just take a look. Something that I do in my home is I do not fold my kids' clothes, except for, yes, she has hanger wash, like her dresses or whatever, but everything else just gets thrown into bins categorized by the type. So we have a leggings bin and a PJ bin and a shirt bin and a shoe bin and an underwear bin, right? And she can help sort those out. Here I just bought these cubicles, super cheap. I believe I got them at Walmart, and then I just added the tassels to make it a little more interesting and cute. And this system is wonderful. I hope to do it in my son's room too. He's only one. But when he gets his own room, I'm gonna do the same thing. It's so ideal. Um, and judge me if you want to about the whole not folding clothes thing, but clothes are not any more wrinkly, especially like with the stretchy fabrics like kids' clothes are often made in. And I still do hang her dresses up on hangers. So, so it's not totally a no-fold system, but I highly recommend that if you have younger kids, tiny clothes, what's the point, right? And if you fold your kids' clothes, good for you. I'm proud of you. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to show you was in our kids' bathroom, and I've pre-filmed this as well. In our second bathroom upstairs, I have kept all kinds of medicine and just bath products, body care items in these Dollar Tree shoe bins once more, and I just labeled them, stacked them really neatly, and I try to do pretty big categories. If you watch The Clutterbug, you'll know that she classifies everybody by like four different types, and I consider myself a ladybug. I like big general bins, so that's kind of what I have. You know, I have an extras bin, I have a medicine bin, I have a cough bin, I have a bug spray and sunscreen bin, and that just is what works for me, and maybe that would work for you as well. Also, in each bathroom, I keep a cleaning kit so that it's ready to go, and I don't have to like carry gross things up and down the steps. So I actually have three of these little kits, and I actually just bought everything at Dollar Tree, the brush, the Lysol, like the smaller amount, so you can do that. Um, this is like window and um, bacterial disinfectant stuff. Here's the rag. And yeah, that system works really well. I don't have to be running up and down the steps with gross things, if you know what I mean. So I'm glad I stumbled across that tip a couple years ago. Okay, so then in our master bedroom, I kind of wanted to show you something that works good for us. And the one thing is my little office area over here. It is part of our bedroom, but our bedroom is Definitely big enough for two people, so I have a little office area here for now. Very soon I won't anymore because I'm creating one downstairs, which I'm so excited about. But I did this for a whole year and a half and it worked great. So if you're a mom who's trying to do a little side hustle from home or something and you don't have a space for it, put it in your bedroom. It's a great place. The kids aren't gonna get to your paperwork, your computer, whatever you have. Um, yeah, I just highly recommend that if you're looking for a tiny space to put an office, 
why not think about a corner of your bedroom? That works for me though, because I have pretty strict parameters with myself. Like I don't work late into the night. I can't most times, I most times do not do that. But um, if that's something that would make you feel stressed out, having your workspace in your bedroom, don't do that then. I'm definitely not encouraging you guys to have an unhealthy work-life balance. But over here, I got this at Garden Spot Furniture, which is like a used furniture store. And in it, I just keep my camera equipment and any you know supplies that I need. And once again, shoe bins come in clutch. They keep things contained. This is just my office supplies. And another tip again is if you want to stay organized in your office, don't have a ton. Just you don't need that much. It's so hard to keep things organized when you have 80 highlighters, 100 pens, you know what I'm saying? 20 packs of sticky notes. Um, just pare it down to what you actually need and then rebuy when you need. Okay, which brings me to my closet. And we all have different size closets, I understand. Mine is a decent size walk-in closet, and I just use the one side. And I like to organize everything by color. It works really well. Some people like to do color and type, but I just find that if I have color, it helps me to find things. I've been doing this for over a year now, and this system has just stuck with me. I feel like sometimes when you start a system, um, it just doesn't work for you. This one, however, has stuck and really works really well for me. I'll do my skirts down here, and then I have all of my tops and dresses just by color here. And if you want to see more detail about closet organization, I can actually link that down below as well. I did a whole video about organizing my closet and also another video about what you should be decluttering and what should not even have the honor of taking up space in your closet. So that video a lot of people found helpful as well. Also, these kind of organizing systems work great for shirts. I can see here this bin is kind of a mess. Um, I will organize that after this video is done here, but I, for the most part, fold my t-shirts and just put them in here, color order again. And this works really nicely. But over here on the other side, I wanted to quickly show you that instead of putting things away in storage, since I have extra space here, I just move anything that's like seasonal across the way so that I don't have to um, even see it when I'm trying to pick up my clothes in the morning. And then another thing that I like to do is anything that I think I want to declutter, but I'm in limbo, I'll put it over here as well, see if I miss it. And if I don't, then it's time to go with it. So yeah, I just encourage you, if there is a frustrating spot in your home, don't just keep being frustrated about it, actually troubleshoot and figure out something that you can do because it's gonna be a gift that keeps on giving back to you. Your future self is gonna like be high-fiving you all the time, trust me. I'm so glad that I finally have a few systems down pat that work for us, but there's many more in the future such as our toy organization that I wanna improve on in the future. And I invite you guys to be a part of that journey. So subscribe for more videos like this one and check out that link down below for all the other organized home tours. And one more thing, I'm being really bossy here, go down in the comments and let me know what is your next home organization project and maybe I can make a video about it and we can kind of get motivated together. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next one. Bye everyone.